Let's go. Strong. 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 Come on. Strong. Come on. Strong as fuck. Let's go. Right, Gibbs, we giggle at this. We're doing skull crushers. I'm going to switch it up. You jump right into the 45s. We're going to aim for four sets of 15. Whoa. It's all meant. Press. 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 Almost 12 weeks out. I'm getting excited. So you have to excuse Ricky if you hear him shouting over here, he's uh, getting slaughtered in this new Dragon Ball Z game. Not getting slaughtered, dude. Anyway guys, a new awesomeness just came into the mail. I told you guys in a recent video that I wanted to order a new Texas power barbell for bench pressing and squatting because the barbells in my gym are starting to get warped and bent. Well, I'm not one to just talk about it. I prefer to be one who bees about it. So I bent about it and I bought one. <laughs> So I'm super excited. This just came in the mail. I wasn't expecting it to come in so fast. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty looking. Look at that. What does the cap look like? Ugh. Check that out. That is beautiful right there. The little Texas symbol right there. Official Texas power bar. Here it is, guys. The brand new, beautiful, sexy, majestic looking Texas power barbell. So excited. It's got a little schmutz on it from uh, the cardboard packaging, but we're going to wipe it all down and bring it into the gym first thing tomorrow for bench press day. So this barbell weighs the same as a regular Olympic barbell. It's uh, 44 pounds. So that's going to be really convenient. I'm not going to have to like recalculate my weights or anything because a lot of Texas para barbells are heavier. They're usually 55 pounds. So this one is the same as a regular Olympic barbell, very convenient, but it's meant to hold 1,500 pounds. So the major benefits here is it's not going to warp on you, it's not going to become uneven, lopsided, it's not going to weigh more on one end than the other because it's been dropped too many times. It's going to stay nice, strong, and sturdy all my life until I get too strong and I bend it myself. And um, the other benefit about these guys are... They are built super stiff. They're not meant to have any whip. They're literally the opposite of a deadlift barbell. So when you load up 800 pounds in the squat rack, because you know that's what I'm squatting these days, and you pop it off, it's not going to be bouncing around on your shoulders and the bar is going to be barely bending. Obviously, when you start getting to that heavy weight, everything bends, but you guys know what I mean. So I'm excited. This week, guys, we have upgraded the YouTube lifestyle. A brand new sexy-ass camera named Beerus. That's right, this camera's name is Beerus now, ladies and gentlemen. Beerus the Destroyer. And a brand new beauty, that is the Texas Power Bar, which I'll probably name Mewtwo, because Mewtwo is an awesome Pokemon. <laughs> and uh, the Oki Deadlift Bar, its name is Thor. You know, because you drop it and it's like thunder. Anyway, guys, here is to some awesome upgrades, all in one week, and I am excited to make gains. Still, no curtain for Nick. Are you bringing that thing to the gym? Hey, buddy. Bye, house. Oh, I saw. Thank you for reminding me. I need to go get my gallon jug. It's all ice. <clears throat> Frozen. All right, ready? It's nice out. I'm in shorts. It's really nice out, but that's all ice right there. When we say it's nice out, too, I'm assuming it's like 30 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. Good old summer in Rhode Island. Look at all the go. white. We're bringing Mewtwo to the gym. I thought it was Jigglypuff. <laughs> so speed and technique is the goal today. Not moving any serious weight, but we are really focusing on that technique. Especially me, I'm really working on finding my technique today. And most of all, honing in on that explosive speed. So, first time using the Texas Power Bar for benching, loved it. The knurling's very aggressive, so it was a little weird to get used to, especially with racking and unracking, actually. You wouldn't expect that to be a factor, but every time I racked it and I brought it back against the pegs and slid it down onto the pegs, uh, the knurling would actually catch and it'd like roll out of my hands. It was really weird. But once I got used to that and I expected it, it was fine, and obviously it was a very comfortable bar to bench with. So, check it out. 
really weird. My first few sets started off super, super slow, as you can see, and I actually started getting discouraged about this. I was thinking it was uh, just going to be a really weak day for me. Turns out I just didn't warm up enough because halfway through the sets, uh, the speed actually increased significantly, and by my last sets, the bar speed was moving very fast. So I think when it's cold weather like this, I'll just need to take some extra time to really warm up extra. Anyway, we're doing eight sets of three paused reps today using only 80% of my pause bench max. So 275 pounds in the bar. I'm somewhere under the 183 pound range right now. I'm under 83 kilograms. I didn't step on the scale today, but I've been pretty light lately. Anyway, really focusing on finding my technique and figuring out what works best for me. I've been playing around with it a lot and I've come a long way. So I'm still perfecting it, but a couple of the major differences I've made today were really, really tucking in my scapula. We all know that you want to retract your scapula dramatically, right? Now, I thought I was retracting it really tight, but it turns out I wasn't retracting it as hard as I possibly could. Like, you really want to focus, actually put energy and effort into bringing your shoulders back, trying to touch your shoulders behind each other. And, um... Eliminate any and all shoulder movement. You don't want any wiggle room in your shoulders at all because that will leak power. So as soon as I did this, retract my shoulders completely. As you can see, the bar speed increased. Also, the bar positioning. I'm bringing it down just below my chest, keeping my elbows in front of my fists. Test time. I think this is my sweet spot. Come on, babe. No, you're not ready. I'm going to this out for you. I think this is it. Yeah, I got you. Let's try this. You're good. You got All right. it. Yep, yep, yep. Easier than the last, so let's go. I think Ready? I have it down where I want to be. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Uh -huh. Ready? Press. Yeah. Press. Come on, Nate. Press. 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 So, as you can see, I finally found my sweet spot, found the right positioning, and I really, really retracted uh, my shoulders, making sure I don't leak any power with that shoulder movement. And it made a big difference. The bar speed was really flying up. So here's my last set, my eighth set, already a little fatigued, and yet the bar still flies up much faster than my first set. So I'm very happy with this technique finding. Press. 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 That was, that was quick. Thank you. So I'm very, very happy with the explosive speed there. The faster you can build your reps up with the lighter weight like that. Of course, moderately heavy weight is key. If it's super light, then it's not going to do anything for you. But the faster you can build that up, the better your overall explosive power will be. So I'm going to keep working on fine-tuning that technique and really just improve on it and find my sweet spot for pressing. And I think it's going to make a, a big difference in my pressing game. So now I moved on to close grip bench pressing. We had to do three AMRAP sets, as many reps as possible. So basically, after fatiguing ourselves with the pause benching, we just went for as many reps as we possibly could using 75% of our close grip max. So I had about 245 pounds in the bar and the AM reps all range between the six, seven, eight rep range at most. They felt pretty heavy and hard. But guys, you see me shout stuff and burp, 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 make all the sound effects. It's not to sound cool. I don't know why that bothers some people. Honestly, I, I don't even realize I'm doing it. It just hypes me up. It gets rid of the nerves and it gets me mentally awoken to kill these weights. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Need to switch up. Let's go. One, two, three. Bar rice is white. Your rice. Cut that out. Ah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Two. Ah. Two more. Two more. Come on. You got it. Ah. You got one more. You got one more. Come on. Almost 12 weeks out. I'm getting excited. Whew. Switching it up, substituting uh, kill push downs for stall crushers or 
vice versa, substitute me. You know what I mean. We're doing skull crushers. I'm gonna, and then versus CT Fletch, I'm a bad, bad man. I'm gonna switch it up and jump right into 45s. We're gonna aim for four sets of 15. Whoa. It's all mental. Wait till it's heavy as you want to be baby. Let's go. Say nothing. Bruh. doing some shit for her channel. You guys gotta go to her channel and check out this. Look at that. Boom. Oh. Need me to spot you from behind? Cause I can. Up, up, and away. So I only hit biceps once every couple of weeks now and I go fairly heavy on them using a controlled bit of momentum in there for all the form doctors that are like, why don't you lessen the weight? Uh, this has worked well for me and especially since I don't train them often, just going really heavy and overloading them like this does well. So I do two sets wide grip and then two sets close grip like this. So typical upper body workout as usual. I showed you guys this in a video that I ended up taking down. Um, I don't get bothered by negative stuff. Obviously my comments are filled with negativity. I just simply enjoy training and, and sharing with those of you that do support me. I took the last video down just because it was like all negative. And it was only negative because I was training for bodybuilding workout, which is just really weird. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I don't need all that negativity. I just took it down. But anyway, this is what we're doing every single workout. Some hypertrophy volume training. So the basic sum up, per usual, focus on the strength training 100% first and foremost. That is the priority. And then we end the workout with some moderate hypertrophy stuff, just hitting the delts and the back and the arms a little bit, but nothing with extreme exertion. We don't want it to affect the strength training. Getting close to four. We got here at about 2 p.m. So about an hour and 45 minutes we've been here. And Ari's still over yonder, hitting cardio now. She just finished her lower body workout and she filmed all of it for her channel. So, that's how, uh, how we like spending our weekdays. Highlight of my day and week is the gym. I'm becoming very, very proud of this gym. Okay, so a little history, uh, not really history, but a little fun fact about Rhode Island is sadly, Rhode Island has the worst selection of hardcore serious gyms. I don't know why. Rhode Island actually at one point, another fun fact, was listed as one of the, the strongest states, which makes sense because it's a coastal state. So, um, But unfortunately, all the, the hardcore gyms that used to be around are extinct now. You'll find a couple way up north, right on the borderline of Massachusetts. That's about it. And for anybody here that's in central Rhode Island or southern Rhode Island, uh, there's nothing, you know, because that's a 50 hour drive for me. 
it's 50 hour, wow. That's a 50 minute drive for me. So uh, unfortunately in central Rhode Island, throughout most of the state, all you're gonna find is Planet Fitnesses, Anytime Fitnesses. There's one major Golds gym in East Greenwich, but Golds itself is becoming overpacked. It's super expensive. And honestly, it's becoming kind of a soft gym as well. So Ocean State Health and Fitness here in East Greenwich. You guys see me shout it out all the time. Okay, and they don't pay me or anything like that. Legitimately, I'm just super proud to represent it because in a state where, you know, good solid gyms are dying, this is the only one maintaining. Um, you guys know the price is cheap. Besides that, it's a gym where you can actually come in and get the real weight room feel. So, you're allowed to use chalk. We have deadlift bars now, squat bars, Texas bars. Those are me. But you know, you got everything. A deadlift platform, there's gonna be strong man stones here. But of course you have all the machines for bodybuilding, Arias or bikini training here. It's a legitimate gym. You're allowed to use chalk, real metal weights you can throw around, the old school metal dumbbells. And it's really the only gym in Central Rhode Island that's not all foo-fooed up and cozy and becoming overly commercially and soft. So that's a little fun fact about Rhode Island and that is why you see me showing love to this gym so much. And then Mike is a competitive bodybuilder himself and he always just shows me so much support when leading up to these meets and whatnot. So that's why I wanted to iterate to you guys why I'm so crazy about this gym. In Central Rhode Island, this is the only gym pushing through the softness and becoming real. Ready, bro? Yeah.